Hey guys and gals, Marcus from Topic Tech, and today I'm going to show you some tips and tricks that will allow you to get the most from your 4th gen Apple TV. Now, I'm sure many of you will know some, maybe a lot of these, but I hope that you take away something new. Starting off, let's get Siri out of the way. I'm still learning what commands I can give Siri, and the ones I'm going to cover I find pretty useful. If I miss one that is super awesome, I'm sorry, but I would love for you to leave it in the comment section below because I might not know it. So here we go. No way. No, 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 no way. You can use Siri to rewind and fast forward. Just hold the Siri button and say something like, fast forward four minutes and 30 seconds. Perfect. It's time to return to a simpler age. I gave it to you. It's just very hard to understand you without a... Search him. You can even say something like, what did he say? While watching a movie, and Siri will rewind 15 seconds, and if available, put the subtitles on for that segment. So who talks first? You talk first? I talk first. The old man gave it to you. It's just very hard to understand you without a... Let's say you're in the middle of searching the App Store, and you decided you wanted to watch Netflix. Just tell Siri, open Netflix, and you will jump right to it. If you're watching a movie or TV show, you can ask Siri things like, who stars in this? Who directed this? Or what is this rated? While watching videos, you can tell Siri to do things like turn on or off subtitles, or play from the beginning. If you're in an app like Netflix, try to say something like play an episode of Arrow with John Barrowman. If you're in an app like YouTube, ask Siri to play videos from Topic Tech. In fact, you can use Siri for nearly everything. Ask Siri for how a certain stock is doing, what the weather is, the latest sports information, and even ideas for what to watch. Swiping down on the touchpad reveals a menu allowing you to change most of your audio settings. If the movie you are watching supports multiple languages, you can change that here. The Reduce Loud Sounds option attempts to keep sound levels equal. Great for those movies with sudden explosions, or commercials that have a higher volume level than what you're watching. You can also select your speaker output. If you have a sound system or AirPlay speakers you'd want the sound to come out from, this is where you can easily change that. Apple has included some really beautiful screensavers. Aerial flyovers of New York, Hawaii, London, San Francisco, and China. There are over 30 different flyovers, ranging from location and time of day. To enable these screensavers, go to Settings, General, Screensaver, and change the type to Aerial. You can force the screensaver to start just by double-clicking the menu button, or single-click if you're already at the home screen. Just like on an iPhone or an iPad, if you double-click your home button, it brings up the app switcher, which allows you to easily switch between multiple applications. If an app is giving you issues, like it's not loading, bring up the app switcher by double-clicking the home button, navigate to the app in question, and swipe up on the touchpad to remove it from the list. This forces the application to close and clears any cache in the Apple TV's RAM. If you want to rearrange the layout of your home screen, Select the app you want to move and click and hold on the trackpad until it starts to wiggle. Then, swipe to move the app around. Once you have it where you want it, click the touchpad again and it will stay in place. While rearranging the apps, you may decide that you want a folder for all of your games or news apps. If you drag one app onto another, it will create a folder. But I find that it's easier while rearranging to just hit the play pause button, then click new folder, or move to an existing folder. The process is the same for the reverse. If you decide you no longer want an app that you've downloaded, navigate to the app, click and hold on the touchpad until the app starts to wiggle, now press the play pause button on the remote to bring up a menu, and then choose delete. This does not work on applications that ship with the Apple TV though. At some point you may find that you're running low on storage. Another way to get rid of apps is to go to Settings, General, Manage Storage. 
This list will show you just how much space each app is taking up. Just click the trash can next to the item and it will be deleted. The Apple TV never really powers off. It just goes to sleep mode. To force it to sleep, just hold the home button and it will ask you if you want to sleep the device. Sometimes things just don't feel like they are running right. It is a computer and sometimes it just needs to be restarted. Go to Settings, System, Restart. It hasn't happened to me yet, but it's only a matter of time. The Apple TV may freeze or stop responding. It's a computer, that's what they do from time to time. To force restart the Apple TV, hold down the menu and home buttons until the Apple TV's indicator light starts flashing. I'd only ever recommend doing this though if you're unable to restart through the settings menu. Want to have a backup remote in case you can't find the Apple TV remote? If you have an extra remote laying around, or perhaps even a universal media remote with multiple device profiles, you can pair it with the Apple TV. Just go to Settings, Remotes and Devices, and scroll down to the Other Devices section. If it's a Bluetooth remote, click Bluetooth. If it's an IR-based remote, click on Learn Remote. Likewise, if your TV or sound system supports HDMI CEC, you can control basic features and navigation with any of those devices' remotes. Right below Learn Remote, there is a section called Home Theater Control. Turn on Control TVs and Receivers, and then set Volume Control to Auto. Speaking of remotes, typing can be much easier if you have an iOS device like an iPhone or an iPod Touch. Just download the Apple Remote app and make sure home sharing is logged in and enabled on both the Apple TV and the app. If you're an Android user, check out the app Air Remote. You can also use a Bluetooth keyboard for navigating and typing. Just put the keyboard into pairing mode and under Settings, Remotes and Devices, Bluetooth, click on your keyboard once it comes up in the list. Follow the on-screen instructions to finish pairing. AirPlay isn't new to the scene, but a lot of people tend to forget about it and overlook it as an easy solution to certain limitations. For example, Amazon Prime subscribers are still waiting for Amazon to release its Prime Video app on the Apple TV. Well, if you have an iOS device, load up the Amazon Prime Video app, choose a video, and then look for the AirPlay icon in the interface. Just tap the icon and choose your Apple TV from the list. AirPlay mirroring is also handy. Whenever I find a video on Facebook that I want to share with all my friends in the room, I mirror my device's entire screen because Facebook lacks AirPlay functionality. Simple workaround. At the office, when training people or presenting information to the room, I mirror my MacBook Pro screen to the Apple TV, turning it into a conference room display. If you'd like to do this, make sure your Mac meets the system requirements to do so. Link in the description below if you'd like to check. If you meet the system requirements, look for the AirPlay icon at the top of your screen. If it's not there, open System Preferences on your Mac, click Displays, and then click the checkbox at the bottom that says Show Mirroring Options in the menu bar when available. If you are watching a YouTube video or Netflix and your sound isn't matching up to the video, Go into Settings, Audio and Video, Surround Sound, and change it to one of the other options to see if that helps. I usually get best results with Stereo. If you're like me, you have multiple Apple TV devices in your home. Give each of them a custom name by going to Settings, AirPlay, Apple TV Name. That way, you can differentiate between which Apple TV you are selecting when you go to AirPlay Content. There you have it, 28 tips and tricks for your new Apple TV. As I mentioned before, if I didn't show one you know, leave it in the comment section. I plan on doing another video as I compile another list and I'm sure I overlooked a few. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. And if you want more tips and tricks, how-tos, and reviews, head over to our channel and check out our ever-growing library. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're a gamer, be sure to check out our other channel, Topic Tech Gaming. We do game reviews, let's play videos, and video guides. We are always working on something and we are open to requests. This has been Marcus from Topic Tech. Thanks for watching.